Let us now look into some axioms and theorems on probability. When we say an axiom, it is a statement that we just consider as true and we don't need proof for it. And here are some of the axioms of probability. The first one is that for every event A, the probability of that event A will be greater than or equal to zero. Or in other words, it will always be positive. Which by definition should be true because we want all probabilities to be greater than or at least greater than or equal to zero. Which meant that zero is the lowest value. Which means it's impossible for that to happen. Next axiom, let S be the sample space, then the probability of the sample space happening is 1. Because I think every everyone would know that since the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes, if all of them happens, then we are certain that the sample space did happen. That's why the probability of the sample space happening is 1. Because that meant that the experiment did take place, whatever result will come out. If A and B are mutually exclusive events, then we represent them as the probability of A union B will be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So, we know again that when we say events are mutually exclusive, it means that they cannot occur, cannot occur at the same time, at the same time. And when we are going to compute the probability of them happening together, all we need to do is add the probability of the first event and add the probability of the second event. And if these mutually exclusive events are not just two, but there's actually a lot, to find the probability of each of them happening, or all of them rather happening, we just need to add their probabilities. So for mutually exclusive events, if we want to find the probability of them, of the two events happening, even though they cannot occur at the same time, so the probability of A happening or B happening, we just need to add the two probabilities. If there are more than two, then we just simply add all the probabilities. Some theorems. When we say theorems, these are statements that we would need proof. But here, we're not going to show the formal proof, but rather the explanations. So we know that if this is an empty set, then the probability of an empty set is zero. That is true because we know that the empty set, the cardinality of that would be zero. So following the definition, that will just be zero over the cardinality of the sample space, which would be zero. So the probability of an empty set or a null set is zero. If a if a raised to c here is the complement of event a or a complement, then the probability of a complement would be equal to one minus the probability of a. Now we all know that if we combine a and a complement via union, this will be equal to the universal set, in this specific case, the sample space. And we know that these two are mutually exclusive. They cannot occur at the same time. So the probability of A plus the probability of A complement should be equal to the, this union. But this union is actually equal to the probability of the sample space. But we know that the probability of the sample space based on an axiom is 1. So the probability of A plus the probability of A complement will be equal to 1. And performing simple operation, the probability of A complement now will be equal to 1 minus the probability of A. So that's how we find the, the probability of a complement. Next, if A is a subset of B, proper subset of B for that matter, then the probability of A is less than the probability of B. Well, if A is a subset of B, let's say this is B and this is A, A will have fewer elements than B. So it just so happens that if you have fewer elements on the numerator having the same denominator, you'll have a smaller fraction. That's why the probability of A is less than the probability of B. 
fourth theorem, if A and B are any two events, then the probability of A minus B is equal to the probability of A minus the probability of A intersection B. Let's try to illustrate this one. Let's have our universal set here as our sample space. Then I'm going to have this one and this one also. Oops, it's a bit too big of a bigger circle. Anyway, it's fine. So we have here set A, we have here set B. We are told that the probability of A minus B, which we know in set operations is this one that I am shading in black. There. We are told that this is equal to the probability of A. I'm going to shade the probability of A in blue. Minus the probability of A, my, A intersection B rather. A intersection B is the one that I am now shading in red. So as you can see, if we remove this red area from the blue area, we're going to just get the black area. Which shows that the probability of A minus B is probability of A minus probability of A intersection B. Lastly, if A or B are any two events, then the probability of A or B, A union B, will be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now, they are not just mutually exclusive. They are also like this Venn diagram here. So, let's have that. Let's have another Venn diagram here for theorem 5. Then, let's have this set here then i'm going to have another set right here there you go so this is a and b so the probability of a union b is the probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a and b why do you think we would have to subtract this one let's take a look the probability of A union B is the one that I am shading in black. The probability of A, I'm going to shade it in blue. The probability of B, I'm going to shade it in green. Now, as you can see, we have already covered the black area by the blue and the green one however we shaded this area i'm going out and circled it in red twice one for a and one for b but these should just be counted just once but since it's counted twice we need to remove that second counting of a and b so that is the reason why we are having the subtraction this is a and b counted twice one in blue, one in green. So we remove that one counting so we can get just one count of A union B. So that's why there is a subtraction here. This one is what we call the inclusion exclusion principle. Exclusion principle. And this entire statement here of addition is what we usually call the general addition rule of probability. Addition rule of probability. There you go. And those are some of the axioms and theorems of probability.